This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies. Amplified. Hello, everyone. This is Kenny Lilly from Do The Math 24-7. I hope everyone is having a great day. Thank you for tuning in to the next episode of Math Talk. Before we go into our next episode with Miss Kelly Carter, we're going to first um, briefly discuss a little bit about Do The Math. So Do The Math 24-7 is a positive message on respect, unity, and equality. Do The Math 24-7's positive message is broken down in the five basic math symbols. Add, add respect, add kindness for subtract, subtract bullying, subtract injustice for multiply, multiply acceptance, multiply understanding. For divide is indivisible. Even though we're divided at times, we're strong and unified as a people. Equal stands for equality, and 24-7 stands for all the time. So do the math 24-7. So with that, um, I want to introduce Ms. Kelly Carter, who is a reading interventionist for um, Hyatt Middle School. Hello, Kelly. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? Good, good. So um, just want to share a little bit of the background of first meeting you. I was actually an, ending a meeting at Hyatt Middle School I was getting ready to start a um, after school program with the Boys and Girls Club there. And I, I, as I was walking out, I um, started talking to Miss Kelly Carter and she told me she was a reading interventionist. So I was like, interesting, mm -hmm. because I have an interest in starting an, a, a reading mentoring program in Des Moines Public School. So we went to her classroom and I sat in one of her classes and it was amazing. Just the the your strategies and the vibe and just how the, the students were and just so respectful and just the energy in the in, in the building, I mean, in the classroom. So, mm -hmm. you know, I decided to say, you know, what, we're going to have to connect one day. <laughs> and I was reaching out, reaching out since January, trying to connect yes. with her as far as uh, working on a mentoring program. Uh, then um, but there's so many issues that's going on as far as literacy, mm -hmm. regardless of the school district. Literacy mm -hmm. is an issue mm -hmm. um, and it starts with elementary schools. Uh, going into middle school and high school. So, you know, that was something I was heavy on my heart. And I figured, you know, what is something that we can, that I can do to help, you know, um, address bullying? I'm just not bullying, but to address literacy. Um, I've gone to countless um, school board meetings with, um, you know, in the community with parents. And one of the main questions is, what are the school district going to do as far as literacy? How are we going to really address literacy? So for me, because I know that literacy is being addressed, but I wanted to make sure that with this podcast episode that we can highlight all the great things that's going on uh, with literacy in Des Moines Public Schools. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's, it's a great thing that's going on. And of course, there needs to be improvement in all schools. Right. But um, literacy is huge. And we definitely want to make sure that we address that. And um, as, as an ecosystem in general, we come together and all assist with addressing literacy. Yes. So... Miss Kelly, how you doing again? I am good. It's good to be here. Yes, yes. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is Kelly Carter. I'm actually Carter. Kelly Franklin Carter. Okay. Um, I was born and raised in Waterloo, Iowa. Grew up, uh, went to Grant Elementary, Logan Intermediate, and East High School. Shout out H2 Lou. <laughs> and so when I was 24, I left Iowa, and I went to New Mexico. Okay. And lived there, worked for what was U.S. West at the time, and now it's Quest. Okay. And so I um, actually ended up getting married in New Mexico, starting a family, and then Things kind of didn't work out, so I'm like, you know what? I got to get back to Iowa mm -hmm. because I need to raise my babies there because at the time, New Mexico was 50 in the state in regards to education. Okay. Iowa had always been on the top, at mm -hmm. least in the top 10. Yes. So I moved back here, um, worked in, like, different, you know, worked different places, um, trying to raise my, my children as a single mom, mm -hmm. you know, and at, w at one point, I was like, okay, I got to be strategic. I can't pay for my children's college education. I'm going to Drake University to right. work. So I applied for Drake University position, opened up in distance learning. Okay. Didn't get the job right away, but the dean of the School of Education, rest in peace, Jan McMahill, called me a year later, exactly a year later, because she told me, you know, if the job comes open, the person well, the person who was leaving decided to um, to renege her resignation. Mm -hmm. So a year later, the job came open. She gave me the job. Wow. 
So that was distance learning. So this is ironic because I helped teachers who need to recertify their license register for classes, and I took them through that process. Okay. Then I went from distance learning to uh, Drake Law School and admission and financial aid. Mm-hmm. I worked on all back end of applications for students applying for law school. Mm-hmm. So I went to a graduation one day, and I saw a lady who had to be in her 60s at Drake walk the stage. And I said to myself, you know what? I can do that. Mm-hmm. By that time, I had uh, left Drake and went to ISCA, Iowa State Education Association, which is the union for the teachers. So do you see the path? Mm-hmm. Like I was all in academe, and I said to myself, I need a career. So I decided I was going to go back to school, but I didn't. I wasn't going back for teaching. I was going back to work in human services. Mm-hmm. So I went to DMAC and took my first couple of classes, and it was very traumatic for me. I couldn't do it. So I was like, well, what am I going to flow into? And so during that time, my daughter, who is now 27, she was at North High School in the 10th grade, and we discovered she was dyslexic. Mm. So I decided I was going to go to school for education, but not a reading teacher, a history teacher. <laughs> a history teacher, so I had to think I'm going to get into history. I'm going to get into African-American studies as my, or history for my master's. But my daughter ended up being dyslexic and was dyslexic, and I never knew it. So I took my first special education class at Drake and fell in love. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting ready to do secondary education, special education with a reading endorsement. So that's how I landed. That's like the short version of me being here in Des Moines. So I started out in North High School um, my first two years, and then I tramped, well, you know, got applied for the reading interventionist position at Hyatt, and I've been there since the pandemic. I started in the pandemic. Okay. And I love my job. Nice. I miss my baby so bad right now. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I've been at Hyatt for four years. Okay. So what are uh, some of the challenges that um, middle schools face as far as reading in your classroom or some of the stuff that before they start, some of the issues that you see that they have? Okay. So we know that statistics say that when kids are in kindergarten to third grade, they are learning to read. From third grade on, they are reading to learn. So what I'm falling into is that let's take it all the way back to No Child Left Behind Mm -hmm. and how they got rid of kids learning to read with a phonetic process Mm -hmm. and they pushed this whole comprehension thing and it has failed. So what I'm seeing now is kids coming in who are persistently at risk students reading and we got kids who are in sixth grade coming in with a second or third grade reading level. Even when I was in teaching at North High School, kids were graduating at a third grade or second grade reading level. Broke my heart. What do you do? Mm. There's such a huge gap. So that's the first thing that I'm seeing that kids are behind. And, like, how do how do I catch a kid up mm-hmm. with all of that, you know? That's a lot. So that's the biggest thing that I see coming into middle school. Okay, okay. So um, as far as, like, strategies, what are some strategies that are that's effective as far as literacy in your classroom to get them more equipped? Okay, so I'm old school. And when I grew up, I, I grew up learning how to read with the ECRI system. And I was in small group reading. I had problems with reading and math, mm-hmm. you know, so I had to be pulled out and go to skills 15, 20 minutes a day, every day. But I grew up learning how to read and write with, okay, if the word is bombshell, you got to write it 10 times, say it 10 times, spell it 10 times, you know. Intervention for me is is simple. Like I use fluency passages in my classroom, and it's kind of a, a prescription thing for me because every kid is different. So if I have John over here who's at a second grade reading level and he needs to learn how to – um, practice syllabication and decoding so he can sound out words. But I have Jose over here who has come into the country and he's Spanish as his first language, but then he has some challenges and maybe sounding out some words, but got the speed on the reading, you know. But then I have Maya over here who can't comprehend. Everything is prescriptive for me as a reading interventionist. Like I have, um, some tools that I believe in, like, or or people that I follow in the reading world, like science of reading. I love science of reading because science of reading is uh, research-based. I think they took about 
maybe eight to ten years to do the research. And what they found is that they have pushed it back to phonetic learning. And so um, that means sounds and sounding out words to, to learn how to read. And then writing is a big component, too, because reading and writing goes yes. hand in hand. And I really love the work that the writing revolution is doing because they take it all the way back to just basic writing. So when it comes to reading, like, it's very prescriptive. So in my classroom, what you will see is kids coming in having to read five minutes a day. I don't care what you read. Mm-hmm. It can be on your cell phone. It can be a newspaper. It can be a magazine. It can be a book. Multimodal reading because we're not exposing our kids to just different modes of reading, right? They have to read five minutes a day. Then we have fluency reading. So that's when it comes in. You have a fluency passage, and let's see how fast you can read in one minute. But in that, kids are learning decoding how to sign out words, how to tackle big words, syllabication, and things like that. And when I say syllabication, I'm meaning words that have more than one syllable, mm-hmm. like five and six syllable words. And so from then I move from there I'm moving into comprehension. So okay, you read it, but tell me what it's about. And so then from then, okay, so can you write about it? Mm-hmm. You know? And so kids be like, Oh, Miss Carter, you know, we gotta write, listen, we have to write five sentences. Are you kidding me? You can't write five sentences. But by the time they leave me, they write in two and three pages. There you go. You know, but a lot of it boils down to interest, too. So it's not that kids can't read, but what are you giving them to read? Are you giving them choice in the reading? Okay, so that's like the second part of it. So when you came to visit me, it was crazy because it was at the beginning of the school year, yep, right? Yep. And I know you saw Miss Carter, Miss Carter, Miss Carter. Like because I do a lot of social emotional learning in my room. That's always first in building relationships. In the class that you saw, was thirteen seventh graders that I handpicked that nobody wanted, basically because we had people who had behavior problems. We had people who have autism. We had people who are on meds. We had people that, yep, I'm smart, but I'm eloping because I'm getting ready to be with my friends. We have people that have attitudes. I handpicked every single one of those kids to prove a point. And the point was that in the Carter community, because Carter that's community. what we call it, mm-hmm. this is what is going to happen. This is how it's going down. And those kids were coming in reading 175. 225 words per minute, but they just needed somebody to build relationship with them, believe in them, set the standard high, high. and the expectation high, and then because they called me Mama Carter, mm-hmm. and they know Mama Carter ain't playing. Right. So, and that's what it was. Mm-hmm. So when you came in, you know, it was a lot of excitement and stuff because probably I have those kids maybe 42 minutes, but 20 of those minutes, it's like they need me. They're very needy. So my job this year was to get straight to the intervention, which was through reading passages and writing. And then from there, I gauged kids to see what they needed and then provided the prescription for them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Okay. I like how you mentioned how um, you said for five minutes you allow them to read you have them to read something of their interest. Mm -hmm. By way of a library that I I have my own little personal library in my room. So I print off different articles. I love Newzella. That's a very good website because it's current, relevant information real time. So I print uh, print off articles. They can read that. They can choose a book to read Mm -hmm. or they can read it on their cell phone. But the thing of it is now... After you read for five minutes, you have to tell me what you read about. What you read, right. You know, so those slips go into a big jar, and five minutes will be added to our goal that we're trying to reach for pizza at the end of the school year. Okay. Okay? (laughs) So they had a big old thermometer meter. You didn't see it because it was kind of like around the side of the wall. And so for every month, I will calculate, and so they will see, oh, we like 5,000 minutes short from the pizza. They got their pizza at the end of the school year. They got two bars. They got pizza, and they got ice cream sundaes because they made the writing. It's a good deal right there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And the thing of it is, is like in my classes, especially in my advisory for the amount of reading that they do, they don't get graded. Okay. So my advisory is special. So I, I reward them greatly. I'm like, well, I come to job, I work, so I get paid for what I do. So why shouldn't you get paid for work what down, you do? Right. And yeah. a lot, I caught a lot of flack. I catch a lot of flack for teachers for rewarding my students. 
um, I believe in spoiling my babies, whether it's like in the environment. You saw the environment. We got cushions. Yeah. We got blankets. Mints. We got snacks. We, come on. <laughs> like I made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I fed kids, yeah. you know, all that we kind of stuff. But how can you get a kid to read if they hungry? Right. I mean, you mentioned that. Yeah. How can a kid read if they had to walk? I had kids walking from the fairgrounds. You see what it is? You got to go underneath the the passage, and, you know, they walk. Like, and by the time they get to me in this fifth period, they're like, Miss Carter, well, I'm tired. Okay, well, then grab your pillow and your blanket and, and go to sleep. Yeah. Because you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's back to that social, no, emotional that, learning. Yeah, yeah, fitting those needs. Yeah, or if you got a kid that's turning the whole school upside down. I had one little kid, I'm not going to say his name. Nobody could do anything with him. So they, they gave him to me. And so this this do you know this kid is still calling? He calls me like every week mm. to talk to me. But he I made relationship with him and here he is reading like at a, a kindergarten level. But I got him to first grade yes. because I built the relationship with him. Did it mean that some days he was waiting outside my door because he didn't cuss the teacher out and da da da? Yeah, but then I got him in there, calmed him down, gave him a snack and clay. Let's play skip bow and then let's read. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's like yes. meeting their needs. Yes, yes. And I do a lot of that, but I get the reading done, too, <laughs> in the writing. Yeah. Right. Good, good. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, name some um, highlights or some success stories that you had as far as, you know, just, you know, students elevating their level as far as literacy this, this past year. Most definitely. So I had a kid who had not only dyslexia, but dysgraphia. Okay. So that means when he wrote, he was all over the place. Like, if you were to look at his writing, he would have a segment in the left-hand corner, then he didn't move down here to the, I mean, left uh, top left corner, then down here to the bottom right. He's writing all over the place. And so the last assignment for my eighth graders, I had them write about my experience at Hyatt. And so he was able to write from left to right. That, that's huge. Wow. And not only did he write from left to right, he, ho- he wrote a whole page front and back. You know, and I was able to articulate his thoughts. And I worry about babies like that because he's getting ready to go to high school where there's a lot of writing and reading, you know. Um, Kids off the charts with the reading, like the fluency, reading like almost 250 words in one minute and could go back and comprehend it like that, you know. Those are success stories. Or even just the reading stamina, if you will. And the writing stamina, you know, you talk about, oh, Miss Carter, we got to read for five minutes. Man, by the time you looked in my classroom, kids were underneath my desk reading. Kids were sprawled out at the back of the room on cushions. They pulled up with blanks. You know, they they developed a love for reading. You know, it's not that they couldn't read. You know, some of them did have what I call prescription reading where I had to, you know, intervene and help them. But kids were reading and writing and loving it. Yeah, That's loving awesome. it. Okay. You kind of already covered, you know, touched on this, but, um, you know, what keeps students motivated and engaged in your classroom and, and to transfer that outside the classroom, to read outside the class? Well, that's the big old thing. Like, it's my enthusiasm too, right? Like, yes. the expectation is is told up front, like from day one, and rehearsing the language, right? Not tacking, Not talking at them, but talking to them about the reading, being honest. I had one kid, and I was like, man, like, do you know that you read at a second grade level? Like, this is where you are. I had one girl who would come in, and she was in seventh grade, and she would just tackle the reading, but she was skipping words mm-hmm. or skipping ends of sounds on words, wanting to read and keep up with her peers. And I had to tell her, hey, Sweet Pea, like, this is where you are, but Miss Carter can get you here where you should be. And you can see, like, the tears in her eyes because she didn't realize that she was reading at a low at a low level. So honesty is a really big part. But then I tell them too, look, you got to put the work in. Yeah. But I promise you on the other side, it's going to be beneficial. Right. So when they're busting out 225 words, 235 words in a minute, and, and they're seeing like their star up on the board or, you know, it's funny because I would have them read the reading passages maybe two or three times a week, or they're coming in wanting to read three and four times in, in the period, trying to beat the score because they want the score to be better. So you know you have accomplished your job when, you, when them. you've done Yes, challenging them. Yeah. And then they begin to challenge themselves. Another thing that was so amazing is when they begin to know how they learned as an individual. 
their learning style. Their style. Their style of learning. Because then they take ownership in their learning, and then they become responsible for their learning. And that's big. When you see the light bulb go off in, in their heads, it's amazing. So I use things like little rewards. So it's a light bulb. Or it's a star. I'm very intentional about what I do Mm -hmm. because, okay, and then, or it's a magnifying glass. That means, like, if you're getting rewarded with the magnifying glass, it's because you went into that reading and you broke it down and you could understand. Mm -hmm. You know, the light bulb is for the comprehension that went off, or the star is because you're shining because you didn't beat the reading goal. (laughs) You know, I'm very intentional in the things that I do in my room. Mm -hmm. So that one little light bulb, if they come in and they see that, oh, I got my light bulb. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But then they knew at the end of the school year they was going to be shopping in the Carter store. Okay. Because (laughs) all of that, all of those rewards were currency in my room that allowed them to go spending at the end. So, yeah. Being okay. intentional, too. The expectation is huge. Building a relationship. Because if you have a relationship for them, if they come in and they, they're having a bad day and I can get 10, 15 minutes of reading out of them, yeah. or they've had a, a had a time with another teacher that they don't like, but I can bring them down and get them to read, Calm them down that's and, huge. Yeah. Because we're dealing with a different population now. Yeah. It's not like it was when you and I was in school. Look, I'm just rambling off. I'm no, sorry. No, go ahead. You But, you know, when we were in school, we sat the rows – Looked ahead, you know what I'm saying? We couldn't get up, we couldn't walk. I have to design my room and set it up so that. kids can get up and move around. Mm-hmm. There's plants in there to provide oxygen. We got lights that are low so they're not, you know, it's not intimidating and overwhelming. It's cold in there, they getting blankets. It's Friday and it's cafe kindness, and we said now, come on, <laughs> hot cocoa, and you know what I'm saying? Right, and yeah. they read, before you know it, I didn't suck them in, right. and, and they read in. That's you know, awesome. it's, it's their world in there. Yeah. It's yeah. their world. Yeah, and you're giving them that confidence, like you said, just that interest. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and hopefully they're transferring that to the next school level to where, you know, because that's important. Literacy is important. Literacy is so important, and when you look at it, it's the foundation of everything, even everything. math, even science. And it's not that complicated. Like, five minutes of reading. Parents can read with their kids at home. They can They can join in and read. You know, if it's t- if it's Instagram, let's read on Instagram. If it's Never TikTok, about that. let's. It's multimodal. Mm. If it's something online, let's read it. Like yeah. everybody can join in. It doesn't have to be like this overwhelming taxing ritual exercise. Reading is just reading. It could be we're watching anime and we're reading all the subtitles. Yeah. You know, until we can, and then you build upon that. And that's what I do. I build upon it in my classroom. But I I give them that interest and that choice because that's the buy-in. Okay, good, Mm -hmm. good. Speaking of parents, um, what are some reading intervention strategies that parents can use to their kids that really have an interest that that want to excel at reading or just want to get better at reading in general? Well, first of all, just get them reading. Okay. That's the that's the first thing. Just get them reading, and then if they're interested in more tools like reading passages, I really believe in fluency passages. I believe in like sites like Newzella that have um, uh, articles that they can read. But along with that is vocabulary and mm-hmm. is comprehension. Um, take them to the library. That's old school. That's choice. But you're getting them reading. Mm-hmm. Um, Out on YouTube, there's things that they can watch so that kids, if they're struggling, like, with sounds phonetically, um, you know, there's, there are videos and there are programs out there that they can use to help those, help their kids be able to decode words and become better and stronger readers in regards to sound, Mm -hmm. you know, but just get them reading. Get them reading. It just get them reading. And once you get them reading, you can gauge where they're at and see what they need. But you'll never know that if you don't get them reading. Really? Read the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Look, pull out Essence Magazine and yeah, pull something. out, you know, Rolling Stone. And it, it could be a fashion magazine. Just get them reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I noticed um, that uh, DNPS uh, wrote out this summer was like a like a some kind of summer program, like reading to achieve type program. Okay, I didn't hear want. about that, but I know, well, I didn't hear about it this summer, but I know that they've had those in the yeah, summer. It's, it's like really pushing students to, yeah, to, yeah, read to read more. Yeah, to read more because so. it's so essential because, look, we love technology, but technology has come through and swept these kids' attention, mm-hmm. and they just don't pick up a book like, 
picking up a book and filling the pages, you know, annotation. I teach my kids how to annotate, okay. you know, um, as they're reading the circle words. I don't know this one. Put a star by this one because it's interesting. Underline this. Like, I'm so old school with it because we have gotten away from that because of technology. Like, these kids don't even know how to write their names in cursive. What? These kids don't even know to sign their first and last name. I'm like, bro, you want to be a basketball player? And somebody's offering you 60 mil a year, and your name is James, James Jackson, but James Redding came and, and signed your check. Like, you don't even know how to sign your last name. You don't even know how to. First of all, you don't know that the three holes of the paper is supposed to go on the left side, and you don't know how to address your. Like, these are the things that I'm teaching these kids. Mm-hmm. And it's tedious, and people think that it's time-wasting in, in August. But then in May, when I'm getting three and four pages of writing and they have done two and three edits on it and it's beautiful yeah. because, and I've prepared them for, for high school yeah. when they're going to really have to write, right. you know. Um, you know, so I'm doing things like comprehension. We've, we've read the fluency passage. I'm breaking sentences up so they can put sentences together and stuff like that. So now we're going to pay, we're going to play pie face where I'm going to ask you comprehension questions. And if you turn that and you got the question wrong, you got whipped cream all in your face. Like those are the type of things <laughs> that I'm doing in my room. Cause we got to keep the learning yes. interesting, interesting, right? We got to keep it. They, we got to hook them in and engage them yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just get them reading at home. Just get them reading. Yes. Parents, just keep them reading. Yes, get them reading. just get them reading. And even though definitely for those summer months, get them reading. So mm-hmm. it's important. To, it could you know, be keep, a, yeah, keep that it, exercise. Yes, it could be as easy as like if if you in the car, like are we reading billboards? Like what's up on that sign? What street you are we, we on? We thinking a lot. Just yeah. little things, like just you said, little, little things that adds up. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we all always looking at billboards. Most definitely, that's reading. That's reading. Yeah. And they can read it and then read it back. Okay, what did that billboard say? Most definitely. You and can, like, quiz them up on that. Quiz them on that, right? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. So um, what are some things that you would like to see as far as changes or improvement in the area of reading intervention? I think that... And I know it's kind of a you know, a broad question, but what do, what do you think? I think one thing, if we can have reading across the content areas. So, like, okay, let's say math. So why couldn't you get an article about, mm, let's say the hidden figure ladies. First five minutes of class, we written about hidden figures. It's math related. They did the math. They had to do math every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like get them reading across the content. Mm, okay. Give them five vocabulary words every week that relates to math or science like they're getting it but like get them reading and then let's have a discussion around it okay so we're in art class you know we didn't do an art but did you read about uh georgia o'keefe she's an artist right mm-hmm. let's read about her for five minutes just straight up and just, then get to work and then get to work <laughs> and then you can have a whole lesson around georgia o'keefe or frida Kahlo. Or, you know, some famous artist. And then you can talk about it. You can create art about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would like to see reading in the content classes. That would be very helpful. And when I say content, I mean math, science, Mm -hmm. language. They're going to do it in language arts. But if we can get that and everybody come on one accord with that initiative, that will bolster um, ISAS scores. It will bolster uh, fast bridge scores. These are all, you know, state regulated testing. Like that would bolster the data and the outcome on those tests. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay. That's one thing I would like to see. Okay. So um, do you have like any tips for um, students as far as um, that they can, you know, refreshers or words of encouragement that they can work on at reading? let's say in the summertime or just reading at home just in general? Yeah, like, so to start reading, go to your library. Um, if you want to buy books, like most most schools give books away. Hyatt give away brand new books all the time. They just have them out in the hallway. Kids can take them home and read. Um, going to like the half price bookstore, buying books. Mm-hmm. Um, you can join a reading circle. Um, you can journal during the summertime and that and go back journal. through your reading. So 
you can journal about something that you've seen or heard and go back through your reading. Um, You can read with a partner. Like, yeah, just read. Because, you know, in the summertime, there's a summer slide Mm -hmm. where kids fall off. And so, and parents can get involved with that too, like reading with their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just just pick up the book and read, just pick it up and or read. or read on read on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, like everybody was into the big rap battle between Drake and and Kendrick Lamar. I'm Kendrick Lamar all day, okay. but anyway, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Kung Fu Kenny kind of person. But even you know, even in that, well, what happened with that? Well, let's find out what happened with that. You know, it, yeah. read about it. Right. Just, just read. If you can get on your phone and be on Twitter, be on Instagram. That's what I'm telling. That's why I tell my kids: if you can be in here on Twitter, Instagram, if you can text your boo around the corner, meet me at the bathroom, all these different things, you can pick your phone up and read. Yes. You can pick up a book and read for five minutes a day. That five minutes will grow from five to ten to fifteen, and before you know it, kids will be wanting to read a whole book for a summer. Parents, challenge your kids to read for the summer. Mm-hmm. Read a book together for the summer. Mm-hmm. Do a research on like your family ancestry or something. Just read. Mm-hmm. Just read. Just read. Mm-hmm. Just read. There you go. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So um, I know something you know that we're we're working on. It's it's kind of we're, we're kind of stirring it right now, but. Um, we're working on an internship. Do the math. Working on an internship with Iowa State students, mm-hmm. English majors, um, um, you know, different kind of majors in general that they can literally use their internship hours uh, to be reading interventionists in schools in Des Moines public schools. So that's something that we're going to be working on. So students are coming out, um, and uh, the great thing is they're interacting with students at higher middle schools yes. and other schools as well. But uh, they're receiving credit, so yes. um, it's a win-win for both. Yes. Um, it's great for Iowa State students to come in and to, um, you know, interact with Des Moines Public Schools. Yes. Um, and hopefully they may want to become a teacher in Des Moines Public Schools. Come but on. The, you know, come to Des Moines Public <laughs> Schools. Yes. But, uh, but in another part of that is you have middle school students, elementary school students, they're going to be seeing Iowa State students consistently in the schools, mm-hmm. in these classes, mentoring as far as reading and writing. That's going to gain more confidence for the students. Man, yes. It's going to cause them to ask questions, be inquisitive, yes. Yes. and also have an interest in college. Yes. So that's something that um, it's going to be a great thing. And then also it's going to break that fear of jumping that step to go into college. You know, these students, I think that it should be a habit yes. that they have an interest in going to college. Most definitely. That should be a habit. It should be something that or a trade school or something. Mm-hmm. It should be automatic that they already have aspirations to go to college. So hopefully through this internship, and it's still in the working, but uh, hopefully through this internship, um, you know, students will gain confidence, and Iowa State students will get the credits to graduate, but then also they can, you know, tap into these schools because, you know, they need to be motivated. These schools yeah. need to be motivated. They need, and, again, they need to see college students in the classrooms, in the hallways, just just to it motivate a them difference. a little more, you know. And, and one thing – um, you know, that comes to mind in this whole program that I'm working on with Iowa State University is um, it's an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. It's something that, you know, oftentimes that, you know, when, you, when I go to different meetings as far as community meetings, you know, the, you know when, when it comes to, you know, literacy, what parents want, you know, then sometimes the rebuttal is, well, there's not a budget, right? Mm-hmm. There's not a budget for this or teachers don't have enough time to do this. You know, with the ecosystem, we can go into these schools using our VTO hours in our corporate jobs using that time going to the schools to mentor these nice. kids as far as reading and writing. We need to be the ones to be responsible to impact these schools, right? Mm-hmm. Even as far as, you know, students, college students, you know, once you graduate, go back into these schools, and there's no money involved. And, but the kids right? love it. The kids love they it, love and we're it. going in using our own volunteer time through corporate, mm-hmm. right, or Iowa State students or what have you, going back, and we're u- utilizing our time to help educate these these students. But the teachers love it too because it is it's a fresh perspective coming in. It brings incitement into the classroom. Yes. And teachers just love having another adult in there, you know, and it kinda lightens up the yeah. lightens up the atmosphere and things like that. There was one student that came from D Mac and he was so amazing with a with a student who was so challenging every single day. He happened to be my practicum student. He okay. was, but you know, the teacher's like, "Is he coming back? When is he coming?" Back? I'm like, "Bro, like he's he's done." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they make a difference when the they impact, come in the classroom. The impact. Yes, it's huge. Yes, it is huge. And there's always someone that we all have someone. We're growing up. It can be a pastor, mm-hmm. a basketball coach, baseball coach, cheerleader coach, someone. 
that impacted us. Yes. Right? Yes, most Two definitely. Two or three. Most that definitely. impacted us. And to this day, you can still think about that Come person. on, Miss Harris. They used to come to my kindergarten class and play the chip gang with us. It right. was uh, teaching us impacted how to sound. You. Man, and she was giving them a piece of candies, but we was learning them phonetic sounds, too. Go. I still remember Miss Harris. Yes. Yes. And it's the little thing. It's the I little got things. chills on my back right now, <laughs> but it's the little things mm-hmm. that, you, that you can really be impactful. So, mm-hmm. um so, yeah, is there anything else you want to say before we close? Not really. I just want the parents to just, you know, don't be intimidated with the reading factor. If you if you think that your child, like, needs help with reading, like, communicate with the teachers, you know, and especially if there's a reading intervention that's in the building. But most of all, just get your babies reading. Get them reading. Don't let the summer slide take them to where they just wrapped up in technology and all these things like Demand that they pick up something and read it, you know, get them ready and prepare, especially at the end of July going into August. So then when they come back in to school, they don't have this reading shock. Right. 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 So, yeah. 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 Make it a habit. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you again for tuning in for Do the Math 24-7. Um, it's been great today. Great. Yes, thank you. Good energy. I'm glad that we talked about literacy because that's the issue that it continue, needs to be addressed. And yes. again, I wanted to make sure I highlighted the great things that's going on that you're doing and the thank success you. stories, because a lot of time it is the negative. You know, with this program, we want to always feed positive Every conversation. <sighs> A math talk, it's going to be positive. It's going to be uplifting in ways that we can improve and help each other out. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, people can find me. I'm just now getting used to the social media stuff. But people can find me under Ms. Carter or uh, the Carter community on YouTube. I'm actually working on a book called Teacher Love, which is uh, A to Z for first-year teachers. But that's going to evolve into other things. Yes. So I'll be looking for that as well. Okay. You got an Instagram or – I don't. Nice. But Stay it's tuned coming. for that. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Come on, Miss Carter. Yep, Carter's it's corner. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. And then you can follow me on Instagram at, at do the math twenty four seven. Facebook at do the math twenty four seven. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, please add me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm trying to get business up. from everywhere. Okay. LinkedIn is Kenny Lilly K E N N Y Lilly L I L L Y. And then um, yeah, I think that's pretty. TikTok at do the math twenty four seven. And our website is one on one math. 247.com. Uh, this is one of our newest uh, nice. uh, T-shirts. I designed everything. I need everything. that gear. I need this that gear, our, sir. Thank you. This is our newest one on bullying. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about this in another episode, but um, it's an acronym. It's changing a negative to a positive. So yes. uh, being understanding of others, lifting up others, and loving yourself. So you know what? We can all be bullies. Yeah. We can all be bullies. I love and that. I like how you flip that. Yes. A new way of looking at bullying. So Check out that merch, 101math247.com. We got a lot of merch on there. I'm going to get my merch. I'm going to swag it out, There too. you go. Yeah, <laughs> and I design it all. So, uh, But, again, um, we thank you for being part of this podcast. It's been great. Um, and uh, tune in for next you know, episode. And remember, do the math 24-7. Yeah.